Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This beautiful knife is called the Wii Zonda. Um, I don't know about you guys, but whenever I hear the word Zonda, I think of the car that Pagani made. I feel like that's the vast majority of people are going to uh, think of that, um, at least those of you who are familiar with that car. I have no idea if that's what it's name, if it's even if the name has anything to do with that or not. I, I don't know. I'm sure that Zonda has some other meaning, and I was just too lazy to look it up. Um, but I, you know, I think it's a good name for the knife. It's it's kind. Of, it looks like a Zonda, whatever that means. Thanks so much to We Knives for sending this in for me to take a look at. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal Underscore Complex. This knife is absolutely available right now, and I will link it right down below. It has uh, quite a few different variations. So if you're not a fan of the two-tone or maybe you're not a fan of the color of, of the titanium, I urge you to at least go check out the other variations so you can kind of see what we've got going on here. Um, but let's go ahead and measure this knife. The overall length of the Zonda is about 8.75 inches overall. So we're looking at... Shirogorov territory, uh, especially when we consider that the blade is four inches long and 3.85 inches in terms of cutting it. These are the same types of ratios that Shirogorov likes to use in, honestly, a lot of companies. And uh, I think the reason is, is because it just creates a very, very good aesthetic. Uh, a, a good blade to handle ratio is closer. You can get to one to one. Um, usually, especially when we have straighter, more traditional lines, usually results in a better looking knife. And in this case, I, I think that, that that kind of speaks for itself. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2, which is right there. Sorry, I'm blind. Um, so you can see here, it's it's pretty big. Not gigantic, but definitely big. Up against the Demco AD 20.5. Let's go ahead and put it up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3. There we go, definitely larger than both. And then finally, I think we'll do the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Benchmade Bug Out. How's the action on this guy? Um, it's good. It's typical We like, when I say that, I mean it's smooth, but it's tight out of the gate. And I think that that will only get better as time goes on. The detent is tuned perfectly. This is a perfect detent, and especially, it's detent and flipper tab combination. The flipper tab is exactly the right shape and size to accompany the blade on its journey into the locked out position. <laughs> oh my God, that was way too whimsical. <laughs> the detent, flipper tab, and weight and mass of the blade are all working together to create a an, an astronomical, uh, this is not the right word, a, an, a fantastic, a fantastical, <laughs> A flipping experience. An astronomical. What's an astronomical flipping experience? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you could. It, it, it sounds good, right? Um, yeah, it's good. It's just a little tight. I imagine that this will absolutely break in over time. Usually knives that are tied out of the gate, but everything else works. It's usually just an, an indicator that things can only get better. I think that's the case here. The flipping action is very good. Access to the lock bar is also very, very good. Uh, really, overall, this is just a really good experience. I mean, you have one means of deployment here and it works that's all you need is one means of deployment that that works so carry profile let's do thickness up against the spider co para three it is almost exactly as thick right length and height up against the pm2 and para three yeah, it's pretty long, um, about almost exactly as long as the uh, PM2, but you get substantially more cutting edge, right? Way longer than the pair of three. Nowhere near as tall as either. So in and out of the pocket, honestly, uh, this was a great experience. Let's go ahead and do... Um, uh, what, it, what do I want to do? I feel like there was something I wanted to do next. I think we're going to go ahead and do a hardware check. Yeah, let's go ahead and do a hardware check. Get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. You'd think I'd know by now which way those open up so that I'm not, not dropping them all over the place. The pivot is going to be a T8. The um, 
The spine screw, which we're going to talk about, is a T8. Um, the lock bar insert screws are hidden. They're actually underneath here, and I am almost certain those are going to be T6. The inlay screws, this is actually a double inlay here, which we're going to talk about too. These are also T6. So, disas or, or you know, disassembly, if you don't want to remove those uh, body screws to the um, inlays, you shouldn't have to. Uh, it's really just this screw back here, which is pretty cool. It's an interesting design. Um, you really should just be able to take that out and the pivot, and it'll come apart, um, which is really, really cool. Ease of disassembly with this knife, as far as I'm aware, is very, very good. And I think that's neat. It's worth pointing out. Let's weigh it. What are we looking at for materials? We are looking at, it should be printed on the blade. Can we see it? Boy, it's really tiny. We have CPM 20 CV. And I try to remind people, yes, we knives are made in China, but this isn't Chinese 20 CV. That's not how that works. CPM 20 CV comes from Crucible, which is in the United States. It is not magic Chinese 20 CV. I always have one guy who's like, but how do you know? We we know because we know that We Knives utilizes CPM 20 CV from Crucible, which has been confirmed from both sides. This isn't a mystery that people are guessing at. This is confirmed. Um, you can actually contact either company and they can I, I – th this is verifiable. I did it one time. There's some in-between company called Riviera. I believe, and if they're still in place. But I confirmed this a long time ago just to see for myself. So if you didn't know that, that is the case. It's made with American steel. It's manufactured and pieced together in China, but the CPM20CV is from the United States. So just so we're clear on that. But thank you for the detective work. Um, anyways, CPM20CV, two-tone. Then we have uh, like a, a, a coated and tumbled titanium frame. We have not Timascus, but kind of a plasma anode uh, titanium inlay, but it's been inlaid into a carbon fiber inlay, which has been laid into the titanium. That's pretty cool. There is a lot of extra detail here, and there, you know, while it may not be aesthetically to everyone's tastes, it does factually cost more money to do this, right? We're going to talk about the price tag, believe me, but let's not wave this off. Like, it's just carbon fiber and titanium. Yeah, it is. Those are the materials. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> but uh, they're not just they're not just slapped together here. <laughs> it's not the same thing. It's just like a, a you know a titanium bolster with a carbon fiber scale. That's not the same thing, right? So um, these are the materials, but the way that they come together is uh, noticeably more complicated and noticeably more detailed than you know. How it looks on paper, I guess. Wait, 4.09 ounces, pretty impressive. You got a four inch blade with four ounces of knife. I really thought it would be heavier than that. That's pretty cool. All right, let's uh, wrap up specs here and let's uh, <clears throat> measure the blade stock thickness. I just ate, I had peanuts mixed with cottage cheese which is a very healthy, that's a healthy snack. I know some people might think that's weird. If you've never tried it before, try it. It's really good. But a lot of people just hate cottage cheese, so I, I can understand that. But anyways, um, 121, it's probably 120,000, so fairly thin blade stock. Okay, meat and potatoes time. I like how this looks. I went and looked at the other versions, which again, I urge you to. They're linked in the description. I would have preferred one of the satin or glass blasted blades. I think one of them is. I think that looks really good. But either way, this is definitely um, um, some extra effort by Wee Knives. Now, curiously though, this is not a special edition knife. I kept, you know, I'm actually opening the box now for the third time to make 100% sure that I did not miss some sort of special edition certificate. No, this is just a regular production Wee Knife, which is wild. Is it really... The amount of work that they've done here to lay all this stuff in is pretty spectacular. Uh, the carbon fiber looks great. The titanium inlays look great. The fitment of everything is perfection. There's a lot of room to screw something up here. I mean, there's a lot of room to screw something up. And they did it on both sides. 
Um, I think what's even cooler is this thing right here. This is a another piece of titanium that has been nested into the titanium frame. You can actually see the frame there. Initially, I was like, is this an integral? No. Um, this, there's a seam right here. So the titanium, you know, meets and then this has been laid in and then this screw holds everything together and we can actually see back in here where that screw ends up. See how the titanium all comes together and then it's got threads, right? Can we get it? To, it doesn't want to focus. Sorry. I'm trying to get you to be able to see that. Just the end of the screw there, right? It's kind of cool. I've never seen construction like that. Does it add any sort of dur durability or utility? I, I mean, it makes it a little easier to disassemble, right? And it looks cool. I mean, like, let's, let's be real here. This looks cool. <laughs> I like it. The whole frame is awesome. In fact, this is one of those knives where the frame or the handle scale suggests that there's a lot more going on with the blade and there's not really, I'm not a big fan of two-tone. So that's killing the, the aesthetic of this one for me a little bit, but I do like some of the other versions of this that they did. And I, I, I do think that some of those other versions are very, very beautiful. And obviously that's why they do different variations with, with such extreme changes between them so that people like me can go, eh, I don't like that one, but I like that one, right? I mean, like that's because we're, you know, we, we all like to be like, my taste is exquisite. <laughs> well, you pick what you want, right? Um, so I think some of the other versions look a little bit better. Um, so yeah, um, I, I really like the look of this and I think they, they did a really good job aesthetically. Um, I also really like the ergonomics. I mean, they're just perfect, man. Uh, it really, I mean, every edge and corner of the titanium, it's all knocked down. Even the thin pocket clip really doesn't create much of anything, right? I mean, it really is nice. Uh, you have these areas right here, which are, they're aggressive suggestion zones, but I, I still feel like I can move around if I need to and I'm not uncomfortable. You can even choke back here and almost get a full four finger grip like this. But yeah, very good. We typically, he treats their CPM 20 CV to 59 to 61. Uh, the reason that that's a problem is for obviously because most people don't like their, their CPM 20 CV at 59. Uh, 60 and 61 is fine, right? They're, uh, whenever they do a coating, uh, or a, a DLC, it lowers the range by one point, the entire range. That means that this and the other coated blade will be as low as 58, which uh, it's still an opinion, but my opinion is that that is ridiculously unacceptable. <laughs> um, we, your range for the uncoated blades needs to be 60 to 62, in my opinion, and 59 to 61 is, I guess, more acceptable for the coded ones, right? If you didn't know that, it's just going to take anybody's range down a point uh, for, for coded blades. That's just what happens. So, yeah, nobody nobody that I know is like, please give me 58 Rockwell 20 CV, please. That's my favorite. I just love that, right? I'm also a big fan of Bouncy Castles and Melted Butter and Tin Foil pillowcases, right? Other things that are soft. Is that, do we get it? Everybody get the joke? Okay. So yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I gotta keep saying it. I like that there's a flat here. It's like a hand rub satin finish. It actually might be a machine, uh, just horizontal line satin finish. But we have a subtle harpoon notch right here. It's kind of neat, right? Very streamlined, a little swedge. Flat ground down to a reasonably thin cutting edge. This will poke, it'll slice, right? Again, very shirogorafi, but still doing its own thing, right? I mean, we can't be like every folding steak knife looks like a shirogoraf, right? Because I can guarantee you that there were folding steak knife designs before shirogoraf did the F95, right? Um, or the F3. Um, I don't know if... I think we actually have the designer logo right here. I'll let you guys look up information there because I am unfamiliar. Um, yeah, the whole thing looks really good. And again, this area in particular is very impressive. They even managed to squeeze in a little lanyard bar for those lanyard folks. Once again, we have a design that just completely negates the fact that left-handed people exist. Um, look at me as a right-handed person manipulating this 
right-handed frame lock with ease. I can guarantee you left-handed people can do that too and would, would be much happier if we had just mounted or we had created a mounting position for lefties. Now, you might think you can just set that on there. It's clearly supposed to be just set on there. You screw it in from the other side. No. See that little lip right there? This has a specific spot just for it, right? And if we look in here, you can also see there are two screws holding it in. Can we see? Right there. You see those two? It's just really having trouble focusing. Two screws right there holding in the pocket clip. You cannot set a pocket clip on top of this material and have it held in with one screw. Because guess what happens? It becomes a windshield wiper. It's just a, a, it's it's acting on a single pivot point. You have to have two screws holding it in place. So no, you cannot do that. On top of that, it follows the curvature of this right non-show side. So if you flip it over, you've got a, you know, you got a howdy do situation going on. What does that mean? I don't know. Use your imagination. You get what I mean though, right? Um, the stops are garaged, which I always think is cool, right? See how that works? That's nice. Two pins attached to the blade, creating an additional point of contact over a traditional stop pin. So I like to believe that allows for added stability while maintaining good action and good centering, which this is absolutely the case here. So that's great. No, uh, no, uh, uh, you know, lock rock, no left and right play. No pivot lash. It's a really great detent. It's a really cool knife, guys. The design is good. We is capable of making some excellent stuff. Here's the problem. Now, a lot of you, you know, if you're still here, go down in the comments. I'm sure, you know, there's always there's always people like, you know, this dude gets this knife for free. Of course, he's going to say nice things about it. They clearly didn't make it to the end. This is where I talk about price. Um... Yeah, I got this knife for free. I mean, I, I try to say this periodically. I, sometimes I get really expensive knives for free. Um, but that it doesn't buy a, a positive review. The design needs to be good. Functionality needs to be good. Overall execution, flow, all of those things. But what ties the bow on is the price, the value, right? Is the value here with this? No! Well, did you see the price tag? They want $400 for this. We, what, what, where did you come up with $400? Listen, I have conversations with Wee Knives, like the their, their marketing person who is responsible for sending knives out to different people. And that's, that's fine. They do that. The thing I like about Wee Knives, they never get upset when I give them a negative review. They never complain. They never tell me what to say. They don't do any of that. All they do is say, here's the release date. We would like it if you would like wait until after the release date to release any content, which I think is fair. That's fair. They don't tell me what to say or what to do, though, or what I owe them. They just, here's the knives. Pretty cool. That's, I think that's, they're operating with integrity, and I appreciate that and respect it, right? So I, I like Wee Knives, and I, I like the person that uh, I, I'm in contact with. This is way too much money. This is way too much. $400? You put a lot of work into this. This is one of those where if you had it over $300, i would be like, I kind of get it, right? If you had it peaking over the $300 mark. But $400? <laughs> For what? For what? Uh, cool, cool knife. And the designer, again, we can't lean on the designer if this is, like, not, if that's not, for some reason not the logo for the in-house design. I don't think it is. I think that's an actual designer. They don't come up with the pricing. We does. So, uh, we, no, no. Uh -uh. You want to charge $400 for this? It needed to be an integral, an actual integral, not two pieces. At that point, I'd have been like, wow, that's a pretty good deal, right? Dang, pretty good. You probably could have gone up a little bit, but I mean, it's neat the way that the back, the, the, uh, construction is that's cool all the different inlays great work right this is all indicative of something that is justified in the low 300s from a company like we where a lot of times they have a knife priced in the low 300s and it's at least 50 overpriced so i would say had this come in at 320 it would have been appropriate $400 makes zero sense to me. If you love this knife, knock yourself out. I've got an affiliate link in the description where if you use it, I'll actually make money from it. But my honest suggestion here 
is don't buy this. Uh, we themselves has a lot of other stuff in their line that is just priced in a superior way. A lot of Wii's competition is priced at least $100 lower with arguably the same level of execution. Now, this might be a little bit more unique, right? And it is cool. And believe me, I have overpaid for, for Cool Factor. A lot of you guys know how much I will pay for Cool Factor. So I get it, right? But I'm just trying to be real here. Um, yeah, no, <clears throat> no. I love the knife. I love the design. It feels great. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure it would make a functional tool. I just realized why I told you the story about the peanuts and cottage cheese. It was because I am about to cough. <laughs> I never actually <laughs> explained that. So I just took this random break in the middle of the review to be like, I had peanuts and cottage cheese a bit ago, in case you were wondering. Anyways, um, really cool knife. Beautiful design. Way too expensive. Coming from somebody who regularly buys multi-thousand dollar pocket knives. Um, I just don't, I don't think the value's there. That's going to be pretty much it for me today, guys. Um, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.